What's a smidget? What's a smidget? sucks. I think when you first start querying, you're so excited for one, you're so excited to be done with that book you've been working on for God knows how long. Uh, and two, it's like, okay, now I'm going to put my book out there and agents are going to read it and maybe they'll really love it. And then they'll sign me as a client and then I'll like publish a book and I'll be an author and everything will be amazing. And it's so exciting to start querying. And then you get more into the process and then you're like waiting 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 <laughs> and you're like oh wow no this sucks this sucks this is the literal worst and that's how querying is <laughs> this video is 10 query tips from 10 different writers uh querying there's so many different experiences people have querying and sure i could have given you 10 tips but i thought it would be more interesting if you got the tips from all different sorts of writers so there are writers that are uh querying now writers that have agents writers that are on their like second agent they've already had one agent before and they've queried again and gotten another agent writers that are published or soon to be published debut authors and I think it's kind of interesting to get all those different perspectives and tips about querying, just querying tips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a clip of a writer's query tip, and then I'm gonna like expand on it a bit, um, kind of give my thoughts on it just to take the tip that much farther. Um, and yeah, so let's get started. Let's see the first tip. Um, one of the tips I was given was to use an Excel sheet that helps you organize um, all the agents you're interested in, the agencies, um, and also like any comments they share, and maybe even you can order um, who are your top agents. Um, and yeah, so it's a, a great tool to keep things organized. So that tip, using spreadsheets to organize. So many writers I know use spreadsheets. Um, to help them organize all their agents. Really just having a system in place to help you organize all the different agents you're gonna be submitting to and your choices of which agents you want to send to and all their details is going to be golden. I personally, I used, I've used i used both before. So I think for my second book I queried, I used um, spreadsheets, I used Google Sheets, which is free. So if you don't have Microsoft Excel to do spreadsheets, you can do them for free on Google Sheets. And I used Query Tracker. So Query Tracker is a paid service. I think you pay like 20 US, which means I paid like 30 to 35 Canadian, but you get the subscription for the entire year. And it has all the database, it has a full database of agents. So you can just check off the ones you like and it'll do a lot of that spreadsheet organizing for you. Another tip I will say, if you are going to use a spreadsheet or Query Tracker system, to query agents right before you actually query the agent go back to the go back to their agency website or their twitter or whatever and double check that the information you have is correct things change sometimes an agent will change their emails sometimes they'll close to submissions and you, when you originally noted them down they were open or query tracker hasn't caught up to open it for them so make sure to double check that information so that you're getting the most up to date info right before you send it to them because you don't want to like send it to them and then you realize on Twitter that they're close to submissions and you're like great so I messed up um so it's just better double check right before yeah, that was tip number one. On to tip number two. You don't query someone that you don't want to work with. For example, if you know you wouldn't be happy with this agent, that you don't like the other books that they worked on or the other clients that they have, don't submit to them. Or say, you know 
how they communicate with their clients and it's not something that you would want, then don't query it. And just have to query people that you would really, really, really be excited to work with because if they're not someone who is exciting to you, then when you get their offer, it doesn't feel as good and then it kind of might feel like wasting their time that you don't actually want to work with them, you just want someone to say yes. Story time. So on this tip, uh, when I was querying my last book, I had sent a query to an agent where I wasn't quite sure we would be a good fit, but I thought, oh, well, why not uh, query the agent, see maybe I'll be a good fit, and I didn't know it. Um, and then I had ended up getting an offer from that agent who was so lovely, and I had spoken to all of their clients, and their clients loved them so much, like so, so much, their clients loved them. And I was kind of like, I was really like, I wasn't sure we were going to be a good fit. And then I ended up having to turn down that offer outright because I had felt so wishy-washy about it. And it seemed like it would be unfair to both myself and the agent to sign with someone who I really didn't feel 100% sure about, especially when all of their clients love them so much. So it wasn't that they were a bad agent. It was just that I wasn't sure that our styles would fit together and I really didn't want to go into that relationship feeling that way. So honestly, really, really do not query an agent unless you are 100% sure or at least 99.9% .9 sure you would love to work with them. If you feel on the fence about whether or not you're going to be a good fit, chances are having that call with them and speaking to their clients might not sway you one way or the next. Maybe it could, but... It's better to go into querying, really, really wanting to work with every single agent on your list so that you don't end up in that situation because it makes things upsetting for both people on either side. Um, it's really not ideal. So my query tip is to make sure that if you are entering like a Twitter pitch contest or some kind of pitch contest, then to be very particular about the agents that you're actually submitting your book to because there are a lot of them out there and you want to make sure that you're sending to the ones that you actually want to submit to. This is kind of in the same vein of the last uh, tip but for pitch contests. So Twitter pitch contests, things like Pit Mad and DV Pit and Pit Dark and SFF Pit, etc. The list goes on. You agents will like your pitches to solicit you to query them. Sometimes also editors from publishers will do this as well, usually from smaller publishers, um, usually not like a big five publisher editor but this is to solicit you to query them, you don't have to query them. So again, if you don't feel like it's an agent or an editor that you would be really interested in working with, you don't have to send to them. If for whatever reason that agent somehow gets a hold of your personal email through whatever means and they email you to say, hey, did you want to send this to me? If you really wanna send it to them, by all means send it to them. But if you don't and that situation makes you feel pressured like you really have to you really don't have to save them and yourself the time by just emailing and saying you know what i don't think will be a good fit together and that's why i didn't send any materials to you but thank you so much for asking me and it's like that simple it doesn't have to be complicated you don't have to get into this huge explanation of all of the reasons why you don't think you'll be a good fit in fact i would think that might end up being hurtful to the agent depending on what you uh bring up you can just say i didn't think we'd be a good fit that's why i didn't send it to you thank you and move on okay next tip I didn't say next tip last time. I'm saying it now. Next tip. And on that note, make sure you really research those agents because sometimes they have different submission guidelines based on those pitch contests. So check their Twitter accounts, check their websites because they'll say their guidelines there. Researching agents is extremely important. Why? Because you don't want to end up with a schmagent. What's a schmagent? <laughs> What's a schmagent? Uh, it is an agent who is bad. Not bad in that they're like bad at getting sales necessarily, though that may also be the case, um, but bad in that they don't have your best interest at heart. These are people that will do things like ask you for money up front, which they definitely no agent should be asking you for money up front, um, who will not pay attention to you, 
um, not get back to you, not respond to your emails, etc., which they should because you're their client. Agents who will mass send out your submissions um, in a way that is very unprofessional and basically burns your book with publishers um, and generally agents that do sketchy things. The thing about um, some of these agents, it help, it's better when I like sound it out then I get better at it. Some, <laughs> the thing about some of these agents is that they can seem very reputable some of them honestly i think many of them will ha even have sales so you'll look on publishers marketplace for example and see that they have a bunch of sales and think oh this is a great agent um some ways you can research them are things like agent beware uh sorry writer beware i'm gonna link that below for you um another great thing is to search their name in twitter and see what comes up and if it's a bunch of bad stuff <laughs> then you know it's probably not a good fit they're not a great agent. Other ways you can check into this is you can join um, writer groups. So things on Facebook, things like uh, Kid Lit Alliance is an amazing group, or even other just general writing groups like 88 Cups of Tea or other groups for creating writers. And you can ask about an agent. If you're having difficulty finding things about them for research or you're feeling a little bit sketched out by them, you can say, hey, does anyone know anything about this agent? And you can learn more about them on top of your general researching of agents. And researching of agents is important not just for spotting shmi agents, but also for making sure that you're the right fit for the agent you're sending to because um, it increases your possibility of them signing you if you're feeling on par with them and you're getting into things they're interested in. Oh, sorry, I like spoke really fast and then my breath. Where was I? Yes, so researching is important so make sure you do that. On to the next tip. My query tip would be to trust your gut. And what I mean by that is when, is when you start to query and you get those rejections or positive responses coming in and you're still not sure like what's gonna happen in the future, you know, if you're gonna get an offer or if maybe you have to shelve your book, is to really just sit down with yourself one day, maybe, maybe a few weeks in, a few months in, and ask yourself, is this, is this going to work out? Because, um, my experience is with my first book, I got zero requests. It was all like full rejections, no it, like personalization. And after about 20 to 25 rejections, I said to myself, okay, my intuition is saying I, in my gut that I cannot, that like, I cannot keep going, that like, this is not working out. I need to just show this. And that's, and I trusted my gut and I went with that and it worked out for the best. I really love this tip because it's so true. You really n know yourself and know your book and know when it's time to move on or when it's time to keep going within yourself. Um, my second book that I had written, I got to a point in querying where I was feeling a lot of feelings about it. For one point, it was a problematic book, which I realize now, but I like, ebbed and flowed realized when I was writing and querying it and I'd kind of gotten to a point where I was like I am not quite sure if I should be writing this and then it also was at a point with querying in which I would get a full request and I wouldn't even feel excited because I knew they were going to reject it so <laughs> which is like like honestly I got a full request in my inbox and I'd look at it and I'd be like okay cool I guess they'll reject me in like a couple weeks and then a couple weeks would come and I'd get a rejection and I'd be like see so, but those compounding issues of feeling like maybe it was a bit out of my lane and also stalling out and querying came together for me to decide you know what I think it's time to put this book on the shelf and now at this state in my career and my knowledge of learning things because we're always learning i'm always learning other people are always learning you always have room to learn and grow and do better and now i realize that book is very problematic and way too far out of my lane and i was like wow i really probably shouldn't have been writing that and now it's on the shelf <laughs> done and dusted forever <laughs> yourself and know your book and also know your mental health if something is getting really, really painful for you, if the rejections are really weighing you down, that's also a time to know maybe I should step back for this from this book for a while and then come back later. 
Uh, knowing yourself, knowing your feelings and your book are super important. Next tip. I couldn't meet these people in person, so they've written in their entries and I'm going to read them. So the first one is from Jess Creedon, who is my lovely beta slash CP slash friend. Uh, she's wonderful. And her tip is to, I'm turning this way because I'm reading it, is to know what your red flags are and how to spot them. This is such a good tip. And the reason I really like it is because she emphasizes your red flags because your red flag is not going to be the same as my red flag. It's not going to be the same as the next person's red flag. Things that you think, oh, that's really not a good fit them for me can be very different. So for example, for me, I really wanted an editorial agent when I was searching for an agent. I have friends that didn't really care if it was the agent was editorial or or not. For me, I was like, if you're not editorial, I don't have no, no interest. I need help. I need so much help and care. Uh, but for some others, that's not a red flag. If someone says they're not editorial, that's no problem for them. So something great that you can do is you can write down like just a checkpoint list of all the things you want in an agent. Like you're back in grade school and you're writing down everything you want in a partner or a best friend or a pet or something or imaginary friend, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you wrote down, that's something you can do for an agent. And then you can write down a list of things you absolutely, like, I can't sign with this, this agent if they have these traits. And write those before you even look at any agent, and that way you know exactly what you're looking for and exactly what you want to avoid. This tip is from Louisa. She was in my last my last week, my writer jealousy video she was in, but I couldn't film her this time. So her tip is, ooh, I think the only query tip I have is distract yourself, LOL. Querying is hard and if you spend every day checking stats or finding new agents to query, etc., then you'll drive yourself crazy. It's important to either work on the next project or take up a non-tech related hobby, etc. So this is an especially great tip for people who the weight of the rejections for querying really, really weighs on your mental health. You, your mental health is so important. It's extremely important and you need to be able to have a way to try and manage that so that you can continue to live a healthy, happy life, even as you're querying and doing that really difficult thing. So distracting yourself is great. So many things you can distract yourself with. Netflix is amazing. Uh, taking up hobbies, video games are awesome um i love playing the sims that's like my fave <laughs> i really have a lot of fun doing that that's great um some people can write another project i know lots of people will say write the next the next project always be working on the next thing but i know for some people really their mental health doesn't allow them to do that it's just really not something possible that they can do in which case you can work on different projects, maybe take up a hobby. I like will sew sometimes. So doing like sewing, doing anything else, or even doing something project adjacent. So maybe you won't write, but you'll brainstorm a bunch of ideas for different books. Um, maybe you'll make like a vision board or like a Pinterest board. Maybe you'll sketch out some photos of characters you think you want to work on. Or maybe you'll do what I call like mental storytelling, which is I basically like walk around and come up with different details of the story in my head. And then I'll write down like maybe little snippets on my phone to remind me. Um, so I'm not doing the hard, intense work of writing, but I'm still doing something project adjacent so that when I'm ready to start writing, I'm not starting from like, baseline from level zero. I already have something going for me. This next tip is from Kate. Kate is one of my beta slash CPs and she's also wonderful. Everybody is wonderful. I don't think I said that last time for Louisa. She's also wonderful. Everybody that gave me a query tip is an awesome person. That's why I asked them. Um, yes. And she, so I'm going to go straight into her tip. Uh, Kate says, the tip I'm using this time is a very simple one, but it's helped me a lot and is and the tip is make a separate email account for querying and not have it on your phone. It breaks the cycle of spending all day refreshing and jumping at notifications, hoping then crashing when it's just another pizza coupon. First of all, that situation <laughs> is so 
so realistic. I remember, what was it that I was doing? Oh, I was like being on submission and waiting for emails. You spend a lot of time waiting. And I had gotten an email and it had said like, it had said something, something submission. And I got so excited <laughs> and I opened the email and it was actually an email from a writer who was, who had been offered representation by my agent. And so she was sending me an email to like, you know, how you'll send an email to clients of the agent to get a sense of what the agent is like and ask them how it is working together, etc. But then her description had <laughs> said submission. So then I just got so excited, even though in my head, I was like, the editor would never email me directly. They would always email my agent and then she would email me. But I don't know, my brain, the brain works in all sorts of ways. And I got that excited and then it like wasn't. And I just had to like close my phone because I was so upset. So <laughs> I'm sure many querying writers have had the same feeling. And that's why I like this tip because it really, it separates it. And then you can create a time of day. So you create a separate email for querying. You keep it off of your phone so it's on your computer. So not only can you not check at work. Well, I guess you could check at work depending on the, <laughs> depending on the laxness of your work environment. But having that separate email, it's true. Like Kate says, it means you're not jumping at every single notification on your phone because those notifications aren't coming to your phone. It also means you can set dedicated times for when to check your email. So I do know people that will do this. So they'll set a time in their morning that they can check their query email and they'll set a time in the evening when they can check their query email. And in between, they have no way to check it anyway. So it's just out of sight, out of mind, which is something that may work really well for you. So I think it's an awesome tip. So that's that tip. And on to the next one. This tip is from Sarah. <laughs> I was gonna already go, I was already gonna go into the spiel of she's so lovely and everybody is great. We already, we already established this. So let's just jump into her tip. Sarah says, follow the guidelines exactly. Don't get cute. <laughs> this is like, when she sent me this tip, I was like, Sarah's not here for your cute guideline destroying shit. <laughs> so this is like a really good tip. I think as writers, especially, sometimes we can feel that urge to get creative. And especially when you know so many people are querying an agent, you're like, how can I stand out? How can I stand out? How can I stand out? What can I do that's different to make me like stand out in that agent's brain like wow look what this person did and i can tell you <laughs> that when an agent sets out a guideline they want you to follow that guideline doing different random things that you think could be really creative and make you stand out chances are will not chances are someone has already done it and actually it just frustrates the agent because they've set out guidelines for you to follow exactly to make it easier for them to go through their submissions in an efficient way and you've now made it confusing by trying to do something different so this is what i have to say about this if you want to stand out stand out in your writing stand out in your work that's the way you stand out in a query which writer has the final tip i wonder who it is it's me, it's me, I have the final tip. I'm the one that has the 10th tip. So my query tip is be sure to check agent pronouns. Please, please, please check agent pronouns. <laughs> it's super important to do this. People's pronouns are really important. It's their identity, and especially if the pronoun is different than their cisgender, um, that is the gender they were born, they were assigned at birth. Uh, it can be really upsetting and really triggering and really just painful to get something in and have someone misgender you. Uh, you don't want to do that. You, you don't want to do that in any context, context whatsoever. And so it's really important to check on that. So this is like I had mentioned before when you had your spreadsheet, right before you go to query that agent, 
go to like their Twitter profile or their website and check. Twitter profiles are really good because a lot of people do list their pronouns in their Twitter profile. So that's a really solid place to check. But also you can check their website and see if they've listed anything there. And just make sure right before you hit send that you are getting the correct pronoun for them. I would definitely check the pronouns for every agent you query. Why? Because even if someone to you looks like they're a certain gender, there is no look. There's no way, there's no like one way that like a trans guy looks or a trans girl or a non-binary person looks. There is no look, let me tell you. Um, So be sure that you're checking in because you want to get that right. You want to get people's pronouns right. That was 10 query tips from 10 writers. Uh, Hopefully that was really helpful for you guys that are querying now or thinking about querying in getting kind of ideas about things to pay attention to and look out for. If you have any more questions about querying, 100% feel free to comment with them. I've done it three times. (laughs) I've been in the query transist for three times. Uh, Now I have my agent, so I'm happy to answer any querying questions you have um, whatever I can answer if I can't answer something I will tell you I won't pretend that I know and just like answer it for you I'm not about spreading fake knowledge so you will get an answer from me about something I know about or you will get a I actually don't know that's very interesting sort of answer Um, any links I mentioned will be in the description below as well as all the social links for all of the writers that I mentioned in this video who helped me with their tips and thank you so much for watching i have videos that i post every tuesday so definitely check those out subscribe if you like my videos so you can see more videos and please like this video so that the algorithm likes me and that's it (laughs) thanks so much for watching bye